Welcome back to take two of rebuilding an Oliver hydraulic cylinder. Not part two, this is take two. You see, I had this completely filmed and then through stupidity, I accidentally deleted most of the footage from the project I was working on. So I'm going to refilm. As you can see, I have the other one laying here still in pieces. And we'll probably switch back to that, like they do on the cooking shows when they go to one they already have in the oven. That's what I think I'll do. So this is a Cessna type cylinder that was probably from about the late 50 series, early 50, and through the 55 series and into the whites. And basically the way it works is it's a hydraulic cylinder, but it's got a little valve in it where your stop collar hits it, shuts off the flow of oil, and then it trips your hydraulic lever on the tractor back to neutral, uh, the pressure detent style valve. So in Oliver's early days, they used what they called hydroelectric, which would be like these cylinders here. This is a cylinder like you'd find off of the fleet lines and supers it's a little smaller diameter and the way they worked is they have a magnet in the head end and then your stop collar is magnetically attracted to it and then you can adjust it from the seat that way likewise here's the style from the mainly what i consider the 50 series tractors era a little bit different style but uh, same principle magnet in here attracts the stop collar your electrics are in here this one's missing the plug but anyway that lets you adjust adjust your depth stop from the seat but we're going to get started on this one this is the one that came off that plow or that i had hung on that plow if you remember watching those videos and i know nothing about this cylinder i acquired it from somewhere the other one that i took apart i had actually had hooked up and it leaked and you'll be able to see let's see i can just show you that now this is the head end of the cylinder and that one the seal maybe you can and maybe you can't see it let's see if i can get it in the light anyway the seal inside is no good there you can see it it's blown out and that's the one that holds your pressure inside and that cylinder was leaking externally so that was our biggest problem but since i lost all that footage we'll start over and pretend that never happened and we'll take this one apart so the biggest thing that you're going to want to do is have a bucket ready because more likely than not the cylinders will still have oil in them when you pull on them it'll go shooting out I don't know about this one because I've never had any dealings with it until now and it feels like there's resistance on it but what I'm thinking it is is that this plunger is pushed in so we may have to free that up or take that out first and then we'll try to pull our cylinder apart and I'll show you how to do that. There's not much to this. This is just a, you will see in a second, a plunger connected to a little piston with a seal on it. And that's all it is. It shuts off the flow of oil so that uh, wherever you manually set your collar, whenever it pushes this plunger, then that shuts her down and flips your lever back to neutral and you get the same depth every time. Now we need to pull this out a little bit just so we can get to the bolts that hold the next piece on and get that out of our way. And like I said, I have no idea if it's full of oil. Doesn't appear to be, but the guy that I got this from said it was sitting under their workbench for years. So we might be I don't know we'll find out so the next thing you got to do there are three bolts that come off of here and 
everything's nice and covered with dirt on this one. Probably should clean that off first, but we can always clean it as we put it back together. Okay, now this is just a little metal retainer plate. We'll just slide that forward. But this piece is a cast iron piece that's it's got three bolt holes that's open on one end. But it basically holds the uh, head end that has that plunger in it. And then it also seals to this tube because if you look at these cylinders, the way they work, you have two elbows from your two remote hoses. This one goes into the head end of the cylinder, so it's what forces the oil this way and retracts the cylinder. This one, which is attached to the piece we're about to take off, sends the oil down this long tube to the bottom, to the back side of the piston, and it's what sends the piston out. So we have to take this cast piece off, and it's just got an O-ring on the end of this pipe and we'll replace that when we go back together so just a few little there we go just a few taps with the old snap-on multi-tool and you get this off and you see it's just nothing more than a cast piece with an elbow and it has a place for that shut off valve deal to go now we're down to the head end of the cylinder and what we need to do actually which might surprise people we need to drive it in because there's a snap ring inside of here that holds it from coming all the way out so we have to tap this in and then we have to take the snap ring out and then pull it out so an important step i almost forgot before we drive that in to get the snap ring off we have to get this elbow out because it goes through the outer barrel and into the head piece here. So that has to come out first. So we'll do that and then we'll try to drive it in with a brass punch or something and get our snap ring out. Once again, probably should have cleaned it before, but since this is coming all apart, we can clean on our way back together. So now we're able to continue. And what we need to do is we need to drive this in far enough to get our snap ring out. That should be good. We've got room to work. We can see the snap ring in there. At least, I hope you can. Take you closer. You can see the snap ring in there. So we'll roll that out of there. Luckily, our new kit comes with one of those because you can actually get the seal kit for this style cylinder from Agco still. It's about a hundred bucks. I'll put a picture of it and the part number in here. Uh, the later one or the earlier cylinders, you're probably gonna have to go to a hydraulic shop and match it up. But these still show as available and I ordered one so I know they are. So we will get this out now. Our snap ring or lock ring or whatever you wanna call it. And it's going to probably require patience. Ooh, there we go. And we'll 
get that off of there. It's just a thin, not thin, but a round piece of wire and it holds this from coming any farther out and the bolted piece that we took off holds this from going back in. So they work together and hold the head at the end of the barrel there. So, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to use this as a slide hammer because remember on the end of this rod is a piston and we're going to pull it against the head end so we can pull the head end out of the barrel and then we can continue on. And I should have learned from my last one, I need to put a rag over this hole or you're gonna get covered with oil because there may still be a little bit in there. So we'll do that. So on this end, you can see we just have an empty barrel here and had I thought ahead and brought a flashlight, we could check it out. It felt like there was a little bit of a ridge in it when I was pulling it out. This cylinder put up more of a fight than the other one. If you check out this end, here's your piston and you look at it and you think, oh, there's a seal split. But actually, no. It's got three things on it. The outside two are wear rings, which are designed to basically hold everything square in the bore. So that's not uh, any problem that they got that split in them. That's the way the new ones are, too. The middle one is your seal that seals against the pressure from both ways. So you have to take this and get this nut loose and get the piston off because inside of it, and now we'll go to the other one, your piston sits on the rod like this, and inside of it is an O-ring, if you can see that in there. So that's one thing that we have to replace. And then, of course, our wear rings. I got that one off already, and this one, and then your seal here. So you've got basically four things on the piston to replace. Then on your head end of the cylinder here, you have the inner seal, which does your pressure. I showed you that a while ago. You can see it in there maybe. And then your outer seal is just a wiper seal to wipe the dirt off before it goes back in. You have an O-ring on the outside of the of the of the edge here of this head end and then basically that's it you see all this is is a hollow area where your oil pushes against the piston it comes through that elbow through the hole and then just fills up on that side of the piston so basically you have one two three four five six seven things to put on and then you also have your little plunger uh which i don't think that a lot of the kits come with this seal so most of the time they're in pretty good shape. I don't think I've ever really run across one that I had to replace. So if the kit doesn't have it in it, we'll just leave it alone. And then there's an O-ring on this fitting to seal. But really, that's all we have. There's also an O-ring on this tube, I guess I forgot to mention. So we actually have eight things to replace. But this is just a regular O-ring, so no big deal. Now, when you go to get this piston off of here, you're probably gonna end up needing an impact. Uh, at the very least, you'll need a long breaker bar. And what you need to do is clamp it in such a way where it's not going to move. And I like to either bolt the clevis to a table or clamp it in the vise like this. Do not clamp on this or you will ruin it. If you have to, 
you can put a piece of baler belting or something around it and then clamp it in the vise. But ideally, I would much rather clamp the clevis end and then get it loose. You're going to need an inch and 11 16 socket, which if you are an Oliver person is a common size because this is the size it takes to get the filter housing off of the open center hydraulic units. Like on the uh, 1550, 1650, 1750, 1850, 1950, or the 1655, 1555, any of those with that style hydraulic unit, this is the size of the nut that's on the end of the cast filter housing. And there are several other things in Oliver land that use this size too, so it's not a bad investment if you uh, don't have one. I've already got this loose, so I'll just go ahead and take it, the nut off and then show you how to get the piston off. Just like we use the uh, piston as a slide hammer to get this out of the barrel, now we're gonna use this and we're gonna slide hammer this piston off of here. Usually just a good swift stroke will get it off and then you don't have anything marred up. So now let's take a look at this one and see how bad we wasted our time. Well, it needs replaced too, if you can see it. There's a cut in it. And uh, so it's uh, old and brittle too, I'm sure. So. This isn't wasted. Here, there's a chunk out of it. So this one was leaking externally too. So that's no big deal. Then uh, I'll order another kit and we'll rebuild this one as well. I guess another interesting fact I've noticed about these is that sometimes they were green, sometimes they were black. So I would say it depended on the year. Probably later in the 55 series, they switched to black, so I think it looks good either way, you know, when you paint them up, but I'll probably put that one back to black and this one back to green. So we will clean everything up and get ready for putting them back together. So I think we'll go ahead and probably call that the end of part one, the disassembly. And next time we will get everything cleaned up and put it back together with the new seals. And hopefully when we're done, we have a working cylinder. And now that I've got two apart, I can order a second seal kit and have two working cylinders. So that's probably what I'll do. As always, if you enjoyed my videos, give them a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, because that really helps me out and it doesn't cost you anything. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.